Chapter 5. Map and PAR. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will discuss post-synthesis constraints and post-place and route implementation checks for Radiant projects. Chapter 5 consists of seven sections. In the first section of the chapter, Creating Constraints with Device Constraint Editor, we will introduce Radiant's Device Constraint Editor, and how it can be used to create physical constraints for a project's device. In Section 2 of the chapter, Creating PTC Constraints with Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor, Radiant's Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor is introduced, and how it can be used to create timing constraints after synthesis. In Section 3 of Chapter 5, Using Physical Designer, we will discuss Radiant's Physical Designer, and what it can be used for. In the fourth section of the chapter, using Power Calculator, we will discuss Radiant's Power Calculator tool, and how it can be used to calculate the static and dynamic power consumption of a design. In the fifth section of the chapter, using Timing Analyzer, we will discuss Radiant's Timing Analyzer tool, and how it can be used to check a design's timing performance after place and route. In section six of the chapter, using Run Manager, the Run Manager tool will be introduced, as well as how it can be used to run the project flow for multiple implementations in a project. Finally, in the seventh section of this chapter, we will discuss Radiant's ECO Editor tool. Chapter 5, Section 2. Creating PTC Constraints with Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor. In this section of the video series, we will be reviewing the general process for creating post-synthesis constraints using Radiant's Timing Constraint Editor tool. As was mentioned earlier on in the video series, Radiant's Timing Constraint Editor tool can be used to generate a timing constraint file for a Radiant project. The Timing Constraint Editor tool has two modes, post-synthesis and pre-synthesis. As their names imply, the pre-synthesis mode is used before running synthesis, and the post-synthesis tool is used after synthesis has been run and before map. In this video, we will be focusing on the post-synthesis version of the Timing Constraint Editor. For more information on the pre-synthesis version of this tool, refer to Chapter 4, Section 2 of the video series. With that said, there are two ways the post-synthesis timing constraint editor can be launched. The first way, is to select the timing constraint editor icon from Radiant's toolbar, and then post-synthesis timing constraint editor from the dropdown that appears. The second way the post-synthesis TCE tool can be launched, is by selecting Tools from Radiance menu bar, then Timing Constraint Editor, and then Post Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor from the dropdown that appears. Both of these methods are functionally the same, and will open the Post Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor in a new window in the Radiant workspace. Once the Post Synthesis TCE tool has opened, users should see a window similar to the figure in the slide. The Post Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor window contains several sections that can be used to generate constraints, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. In the middle of the window are the constraint tabs. Selecting any of these tabs will allow users to generate that type of constraint. Once a tab has been selected, the constraints editor area for that tab will update in the region above the constraint tabs. At the bottom of the window is the constraints preview area. In this section of the TCE tool, a preview of the constraints that have been generated will be displayed. One important thing to note is that valid pre-synthesis constraints will also appear in the post-synthesis timing constraint editor window. As can be seen from the figure on the slide, all the pre-synthesis timing constraints will appear in the constraint preview part of the TCE window. These constraints will be grayed out and will have pre-synthesis next to their name, indicating that they are pre-synthesis constraints. Additionally, Pre-synthesis constraints will also appear in the constraint editor section of the post-synthesis TCE window. These pre-synthesis constraints cannot be modified, as they have already been synthesized. However, new post-synthesis timing constraints can be generated, in order to override existing pre-synthesis constraints, and better constrain a design for improved performance analysis after map and par. Overall, the process for generating timing constraints using the post-synthesis timing constraint editor is the same as the process for generating pre-synthesis timing constraints with TCE. For more detailed information on the process for generating constraints with the timing constraint editor tool, refer to Chapter 4, Section 2 of the video series. Once new post-synthesis timing constraints have been added, 
an asterisk will appear next to the post synthesis timing constraint editor tab if users have not already saved their new constraints. Post synthesis timing constraints that are created using the TCE tool are saved to the active PDC post synthesis constraint file for a project's implementation. If there is not already a post synthesis constraint file, users will be prompted to create a new file when saving their post synthesis constraints. With that said, there are three ways to save any generated post synthesis timing constraints. The first way is to select the save icon from Radiance toolbar. The second way to save post synthesis constraints is to select file from Radiance menu bar, then save from the drop down list of options that appears. The third way post synthesis constraints can be saved is using the Ctrl plus S keyboard shortcut. As mentioned before, if there is not already an active PDC file in the current implementation for a project, users will be asked to create a new file when saving their constraints. Once a post synthesis constraint file has been saved, it will appear in the post synthesis constraint files folder of the file list tab, as can be seen from the figure on this slide. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 5.3, using Physical Designer.